Hello and welcome to another Spruce and Bruise unboxing. Today we're looking at the brand new Blood Angels Army set for Warhammer 40,000. So first of all I want to say a massive thanks to Games Workshop for sending us an early review copy to check out on the site. This is a really exciting one because this is the, uh, the, the launch box for the Blood Angels containing the brand new codex and a load of new kits as well and it is again another big chunky box. If we turn this over there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, obviously it's very um, Death Company themed. That's kind of like a lot of the new models coming out alongside this codex are Death Company. And um, yeah, they're definitely going all in on a Death Company theme for this box. And I think a lot of people will be starting brand new Death Company forces with this. Um, mixture of old and new kits. Obviously we've got the Assault Intercessors and the Jump Assault Intercessors, 10 of each. But there are four uh, Blood Angels upgrade sprues in there, brand new ones that let you assemble them as Death Company. I believe there's some like Terminator bits on those sprues as well, so you'd be able to use those to convert up your other models into uh, Blood Angels too, which is really cool. Um, but then the rest of the models in there are kind of newish. We've got the Dreadnought, the Brutalist Dreadnought that came out not too long ago. There are parts on that upgrade sprue to upgrade it into a Death Company Dreadnought, which is really cool. Um, obviously it was the old metal Death Company Dreadnought back in the day, the, the smaller scale one. This looks a lot chunky and intimidating with that. And then we've got two brand new characters in there as well. We've got Lamartes, the uh, the chaplain with his jump pack. And we've got Astarath, who isn't a million miles away from the old kind of incarnation, but they've just updated him into a plastic kit. So. Lots and lots of cool stuff in there. Obviously you get the, the codex as well and all of the um, the data cards. I believe that's for the entire Blood Angels range as well. That's something they've started putting into these army boxes. Um, you basically get the, the, the whole collection of um, army cards included in there, which is really, really cool. So yeah, really looking forward to um, getting this one built and painted. Normally I'd like to get these all the whole box built and painted for the video, but I've only got a week to do these until this uh, video comes out. So I'm going to build them all. I'm hopefully going to get the characters painted up and maybe a couple of the other models in there. And um, certainly going to have some to show. So at the end of the video, we'll have at least those characters painted up and hopefully a bit more. And then into the following week, once I've got the rest of them painted, uh, we'll probably have a thousand point battle report, Orcs versus Blood Angels. So make sure you uh, subscribe if you want to check that out as well. It's going to be a fun force. I think there's about 800 odd points within this box. So I'm going to add Dante in there as well, just as for something fun. Um, and then, yeah, over on spruceandbrews.com, we've got a full write-up of the codex as well, along with shots of all the sprues and all the kits and, and model uh, pictures of the models. So lots of fun stuff. So, yeah, in here we'll be looking at all the models, seeing how they go together, and then we'll be flicking through the full Blood Angels Codex as well and see what is included, what's been removed and what has changed. So without further ado, should we crack this open and have a look at what is inside? So yeah, I, uh, I've not done a Blood Angels Force for a very long time since um, second edition. Okay, oh, really nice artwork on there as well. That's very cool. Uh, yeah, I've not done a uh, Blood Angels Army since second edition 40k. Jay's normally our uh, resident Blood Angel player, but it, alas, he is off on holiday. So I'm going to fully channel my younger self and finally paint that Blood Angels armor that I wanted to do. And this box is going to be a brilliant start for that because there's a whole load of stuff in here, as you can see. So, a lot of this we've seen previously. I'll just move some of these new ones out of the way and we'll have a look at the older bits first. So, we've got the sprues for the Dreadnought. Now obviously this is an older kit so we won't spend too long looking at this. But yeah, it's that um, Brutalis Dreadnought sprue with some upgrade parts which we'll see in a bit that allows you to put it together as a Death Company Dreadnought. We also have uh, Assault Jump Intercessors there. Two sprues of them, five on each sprue, both the sprues are the same. And these are a fairly recent kit as well. Um, I'm gonna have to pick up another few boxes of these because I think, obviously you've got um, Astrath and Lamartis in there, both with jump packs. I think both would be really good. Attached to 10 uh, jump intercessors, Death Watch one, uh, um, 
Death Company ones. So yeah, I think that's going to be a very good shout. So we've got those in there and then you also get the 10 uh, Assault Intercessors as well. Again, these are older kits, but you get the parts included on the Blood Angels upgrade sprue to make these into Death Company too. So yeah, they're the old kits. We'll move those to one side and we'll start having a look at the new stuff. So we have got Lamartis here. He is, I know he's a bit, been a bit of a Marmite model. Some people aren't too keen on his, uh, his face on this one with his uh, ball gag that he's got, but I think it is still a cool model. Nice little kind of sculpted base on it too. Lots of detail on the, uh, on the parts. Yeah, I think this is gonna be a really nice one to build up. Like I said, I'm gonna try and get the characters at least painted up at the end of this video because um, I know a lot of people have been wanting to see them in the flesh and seeing how they weigh up to some other models. So yeah, he's he's very, very nice. That's Lamartis. And then we've also got uh, Astroth. Again, he's, he's quite similar to his previous pose. And uh, thankfully he does still have wings, unlike the uh, Sanguinary Guard. But yeah, very, very nice kit. Again, these, these are the two I'm kind of keen to, to build up and paint for this, uh, this article because, uh, yeah, they look, they look really, really good. And yeah, I've been knocking together a few um, army lists using the points from this book and it is quite easy to put together a full Death Company force. It might not be very effective, but uh, it's very, very strong. Uh, it looks cool on the battlefield. So yeah, we've got him. And then we get four brand new Blood Angel upgrade frames. Now these look to have an awful lot of shoulder pads on them. So um, yeah, I think between the four that you've got in here, you can definitely upgrade more than the models you've got in the kit. So if you've already got some uh, jump intercessors or um, you know assault intercessors, you can easily pad out those units in the box and make them bigger, which is really cool. There's a lot of iconography there to put on your kind of tanks and your uh, units. You've got an eviscerator and the hands for that. I think every one in five can have an eviscerator in your, um, your death company squad, so that's cool. A range of different kind of Blood Angels themed weapons as well. So yeah, very, very cool. So there's some Terminator pads too. So it's kind of a one-stop shop for all of your Blood Angel bits, which is really, really nice to see. I, um, there's even a little Terminator chest part there as well. So yeah, the fact that you get four of these in the box is really, really good. Cause I wasn't sure if you'd get like five sets of shoulder pads per, um, per sprue, you know, cause you get 20 models in the box. But yeah, you can probably equip about 40, 40 Marines plus some Terminators and other stuff from there. So yeah, definitely, definitely useful if you want to pick up some uh, more, you know, Assault Intercessors now to kind of ready them for being in your death company. So yeah, really nice. So that is all the models in the box, but that is not everything because we get a whole host of paper materials in there too. Quick nosy at the uh, bases in there. Nothing too out of the ordinary there. So we pop this out. One thing that Games Workshop have done recently is put together some um, kind of card base sleeves for all of the components. This looks like a new Blood Angels transfer sheet as well. Uh, specifically a Death Company transfer sheet. So that's interesting. Lots of uh, iconography on there. And four successor chapters too. So we've got, what have we got on there? The Angels and Carmine, the Angel Sanguine and the Flesh Terrors all have iconography on there too. So that's very cool. So yeah, that's Ace. Lots and lots of stuff there. So between this and the upgrade sprue, the sprues, all four of them, you've got a lot of stuff to uh, make your Blood Angels look very Blood Angels. Uh, what have we got here? That's just some backing card. We'll open up this, and again, I really like that rather than the shrink-wrapped books and stuff, they've put them in these really cool kind of card sleeves. I think it really adds to kind of the effect when you're opening these up. 
So we'll pop that open and in there we get the limited edition Blood Angels Codex which has got a really nice cover. There's like a metallic embossed effect on the front of it. Really, really nice book. Now we'll have a look at that in a little bit and we'll go through all the profiles and all the rules and the law in there shortly. Just wanted to look at what else is in this box. So we've got the assembly instructions and we've got the unit cards as well. And again, we'll look at these in more detail when we um, go through the book, but I'll have a quick flip through now for people who are um, eager to see the new profiles of some of the units. Again, like I say, this isn't just the stuff within the uh, the box as well. This is all of the uh, the Blood Angels units as well. So yeah, Sanguinor, we've got Mephiston, and there are a couple, some of the, a lot of these are the same, but there are a couple of changes with some of these as well. And we'll have a look at that as we go through the, um, the book itself. But yeah, that's all included in here. Obviously there are some new kits coming out after this box as well. So Blood Angels Captain, that can be assembled as a Death Company Captain as well. Uh, we've got a Death Company Captain with Jump Pack, that's using the existing Jump Kit. The new Sanguinary Priest. We've got the new Sanguinary Guard, which uh, we've seen a little bit, but they're part of the Combat Patrol as well, which is really ace. You get six of them in that box. Uh, the Death Company Marines with Bolt Rifles. You'll notice that the Death Company being split out a little bit more as well. Death Company Marines and Death Company Marines with Jump Packs. We've then got the Death Company Dreadnoughts, that's the new one in this box. The classical Bold Predator. Captain Raudio, who is um, for the Combat Patrol. And then your Combat Patrol profiles too. So yeah, really good that they include all of the, uh, the Combat Patrol stuff in there too. It's a nice little touch. Before we jump ahead to having a look at the uh, the codex itself though, we'll just have a quick look through the assembly instructions and see how these all go together. Again, a lot of this is existing kits, so you can probably build a lot of these with your eyes closed, but it'll be interesting to see how the Blood Angel specific bits go together. So obviously we've got the two, the two characters, there's no alternate parts or anything there, they just go together kind of as stock. And then you get all of the uh, instructions for the uh, the death company there too. It also calls out the uh, the optional pieces you can use to build all these as well. The uh, jump marines are something that really does interest me because uh, yeah, I'm going to go probably fully death company. This box is a good start point to that, so there's uh, no excuse. Not too really. And then the Dreadnought is basically just a stock Dreadnought with uh, the Death Company iconography on the carapace. So yeah, nothing too out of the usual there. Uh, you could arguably just build it as a Blood Angels one if you wanted. There's enough different iconography on there too if you didn't want to use it as a Death Company one. So what we'll do now is have a look at the Codex and have a look at what is new. So let's dive into this absolutely gorgeous book. Now, unfortunately, I think this has been leaked already online by the time you see this video. Um, so you'll know that a lot of things have been removed, but there's some really, really cool stuff in here. Now, like with all kind of current 40k codexes, we get some really nice um, artwork and lore in here, detail on the Blood Angels. It's, you know, something that's often overlooked and skipped through but I really, really enjoy kind of delving into the lore and seeing kind of, I don't know, building building some life into those units and um, using it to fuel the imagination for creating my own force. Especially as a new player as well, being able to kind of dive into the book and into the background and use that to kind of influence how you build the army is pretty cool. Now obviously I'm a more narrative player than a tournament player so maybe that's why kind of that appeals to me but there's some like really nostalgic older artwork as well in here along with some new bits too. And yeah that's something I always enjoy when kind of delving into these books. All of the um, the 40k books this edition have been really really pretty with some nice artwork and design in them so really good to see that um, 
here. Now obviously the Death Company get a big focus within this book as they do in the um, the rules as well because there's a lot of stuff here to kind of represent um, you know Death Company forces. As we'll see later on it's very easy to run a pure Death Company list as well so the box as well is very much Death Company themed so it kind of makes sense that they cover it. So all the iconography is detailed in here as well along with successor chapters. While there might not be any kind of characters for them anymore it does give you um, you know lots of stuff here for, for your own hobby I guess creative streak. So yeah after the lore we get the full kind of army showcase with all the painted miniature images and again while there's you know quite a few new models here some of the older stuff does get some love in here too and yeah I'm really looking forward to some of the stuff dropping like the Sanguinary Guard they um in fact, there they are there I know they've been a bit of a Marmite one a lot of people miss the wings I really like the look of them uh, but then I like Stormcast so you know maybe that's the Stormcast of me speaking Equally, the Sanguinals are a really nice kind of update of an older model too. Um, yeah, really looking forward to seeing all that come. Hopefully it isn't too far off this box. Um, sometimes it's only a couple of weeks between the kind of launch box and the main kind of range. Sometimes it's a few months. It's one of those where uh, I guess we'll have to find out and see when it does all drop. We'll see at the end of the video as well. I've painted up uh, Lamartes and Astaroth as well. So... Um, yeah, they were really, really fun to work on. So yeah, as I bet, really nice kind of painted section. We do get details of the combat patrol in here too. And it's a really nice box. Now, I don't know when this is out. And I do wonder if this is going to be the first place to get the new Blood Angels captain. Uh, which can also be built as a Death Company captain. And the new Sanguinary Guard as well. You get six of those in the box. Along with a Assault Intercessor squad. And the captain, and again, if you're sticking with the Death Company theme, you've probably got spare parts within this box to, to load that out, but it wouldn't necessarily be an optimal kind of unit loadout. Uh, you'd probably want to pick up another Death Company sprue if you did want to upgrade that. But obviously for the, 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 the spearhead itself, um, nice little assortment of units there. Maybe one of the smaller ones in kind of that unit size compared to some of the other ones. But the fact you get six of those brand new Sanguinary Guard in there, that's that's pretty cool. And they're pretty ace in the fight as well. As ever, you do get a painting guide for them too. So if you do want to get your um, kind of combat patrol kind of battle ready as soon as possible, you get all the details in here, which is something that I really, really like to see. So obviously you get the, the spearhead rules in here too, with the profiles for the three units. So yeah, I think... Um, Spearheads, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people new to the game find that a really good in. So, uh, yeah, nice little box to pick up with a nice assortment of different things to paint in there. Moving on to the kind of the army rules, though. Um, again, a lot of this has been seen, but we'll go through it. There is some fun stuff in this book, and I think while yes, we are losing a lot of the older models, I think there's still a lot of cool stuff you can do with these. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to putting these. On the battlefield to see kind of what they can do now the kind of base one in here is the same as the old blood angels one from the index the uh the liberator assault group basically if you make a charge move you get plus one to your attacks and plus two to your strength that is very very good especially on in this box you've got all these death company units being able to strike at plus one strength and plus two attacks on them they will absolutely blend through some stuff. Especially when we see some of the um, the um, kind of weapon combinations they've got in there as well. You know, that plus two strength really does kind of tip them over to the point where they can hurt quite a lot of targets and an extra attack is always something that is really, really useful to have. So that has not changed. Some of the stratagems and enhancements have moved around a little bit though. Um, so we'll speed the Primark once per battle you get the fight first ability which is pretty handy uh, rage fueled warrior once per battle at the start of the fight phase uh, it gives your melee weapon sustain hits three which is pretty nice um icon of the angel each time an enemy unit within engagement range of the bearer is selected to fall back 
uh, the enemy must take a desperate escape test as if they were battle shocked and gift of foresight once per battle round just after making a hit roll hit wound or saving roll you can treat the result as an unmodified six that's very very good as well so really really nice one now the next detachment that we've got are the lost brethren this is your um death company themed one and it essentially unlocks your death company as battle line which is really handy for you know getting objectives and um you know taking lots of them if you want to in addition to that if a death company unit um is below starting strength you get to um re-roll a wound roll of one and if they're below half strength you get to re-roll the wound roll entirely so that's pretty good. Now, I'm a bit torn here. I think, personally, the first um, the first attachment stronger with the extra attack and the extra strength. I think that's going to really help to kind of crack things open. But if you are going pure Death Company, you're lacking for Battle Line, so you might want to take this in order to, to unlock them. But then equally, if you do need some battle line stuff, just take some normal kind of marine squads as well and take advantage of that extra strength and the extra attack. Personally, that's what I'd go for, but yeah, pretty fun option here. Uh, we then have the Angelic Host, and this is all about your jump pack troops, which again, a lot of stuff within this box is equipped with jump packs. Um, and basically, at the end of your opponent's turn, you pick a certain number of jump pack units based on the size of the battle, and then you can take them off and put them into strategic reserves, ready to deep strike next turn. So that's quite cool. Um, the kind of downside to it, you can't kind of like hit and run because you can't pick units within engagement range. So if you've maybe... Um, I don't know, you can maybe use it to move units to like a better position for next turn or if you do manage to kill an enemy unit in your um, opponent's turn, pull them up ready to redeploy next kind of turn. Pretty cool, I again, I think I prefer the initial one first though, that extra strength and attacks is going to be beneficial on like every model in your army, where this one you're going to have to really lean into the kind of jump pack if you want to and Blood Angels have got a lot of jump pack units anyway so you are going to have some units you can take advantage of this with I just personally think that first one is a little bit stronger and that's probably the one that I'd pick myself so going on to the um, the profiles some things have been tweaked here um, not everything there's some minor tweaks here or there with attacks and strength and stuff um, I think Dante is fairly similar but just for an example of kind of how strong that first attachment is, base he gets eight attacks. He's getting nine attacks within that detachment, striking at strength 10, AP minus three, two damage. It just seems like a no brainer to me. You're doing so much damage. A small jump in strength can make a big difference to kind of how easy it is to wound the target. So yeah, personally I'd go for that. Uh, Sanguinor as well, I can't remember if he's changed much, he's at 8 attacks now, hitting on 2, strength 6, AP 3, minus 2 again. Prime target to take advantage of that first attachment. Um, yeah, really nice new model too. Mephiston off the top of my head didn't change, I think some of his ranges have been extended a little bit for his weapons. But otherwise the same, uh, the same character we've always had. Astaroth as well. I think his profile is identical, even though we've got the brand new model. Really, really nice model though. Again, with this box, you, you've got two five-man squads of jump packs, uh, Death Company jump packs. So you can already attach those to those two characters and have some pretty good hard-hitting units. As we'll see a little bit later in the book, I think kind of minimum strength units of Death Company are going to be the way to go, just because of how the... Um, the weapon construction rules go you can really kind of like maximize on all the kind of heavy hitting stuff so little pockets of units with characters i think are going to be really really effective and again if you take them in that uh, death company detachment their battle line as well so yeah i think blood angel players are really going to be picking out of the two of those first two detachments to kind of see what fits their playstyle and what works uh, Lamartis as well, I think is the only real change for him is his bolt pistol has got a little bit longer, it's now got an 18 inch range. Um, and again, really nice model, we'll see him 
in a little bit. We've got the Blood Angels captain and the Death Company captain, both built from the same kit as well. Um, Cap Death Company captains are... Uh, your choice you want to make with your characters attached to your Death Company units is that you really want to have chaplains attached to them. And as long as you've got a couple of chaplains kind of strewn around your army, then awesome. Throw in a Death Company captain or something, you've got a bit more hitting power too. In this box, you've got two kind of chaplain figures anyway. Um, I'd probably take a chaplain on foot with one of the kind of um, assault intercessor squads and then just maximise that coverage because they've only got an OC of zero if they don't have a chaplain nearby. So you do have to be really, really careful. Um, and again, you can take him with a jump pack as well. Personally, I think that one's a little bit redundant in this box because you've got two kind of jump characters that kind of serve that role anyway. Um, we've got the new Sanguinary Priest as well. That is going to be coming out in the uh, main wave of the book. Um, it's, there's no option for jump pack on him, which is a shame because, as we mentioned earlier, there are a lot of jump units within the book and it just seems a shame that you can't take a Sanguinary Priest on them. Uh, they're just going to be tagging along with your foot infantry, which does seem a little bit of a shame to me. I think I'd rather have um, jump ones attached to my units to kind of take advantage of their rules. Sanguinary Guard have had a bit of a, an update as well. They now have got two different weapon options. You can take the blade, which is four attacks, weapon skill three, uh, strength six, AP minus three and two damage. Or you can take the spear, which drops down to uh, three attacks, uh, weapon skill 3 plus, strength 6, AP 2, 2 damage, but it does have the lance special rule. So it's weighing up whether you want to kind of take advantage of that lance again. If you take that in the uh, initial detachment, they're going to get 4 attacks hitting at strength 8 with lance. So that seems a pretty good option to me. Again, that's really going to boil down to kind of your your role for the unit. Do you want to kind of make it easier to crack through things, or do you want the additional AP? Um, potentially, you might want two units of them serving different roles as well. So it's nice to have the option there. Now, I mentioned at the very start that Death Company have had a bit of a glow up in this book, and they have got a lot of profiles within here. First of all, we've got Death Company Marines with bolt rifles, which to me seems a bit of an odd choice. Um, your death company want to be charging things and, and fighting in close combat. Again, I suppose if you're going for a thematic force and you're in the detachment where things are battle line, having some units with bolters, uh, being able to sit back on objectives, maybe, but to me that doesn't feel very death company. The real winners are the, uh, the other death company loadouts. So your standard death company marines... Um, they are really, really good. The, the, the weapon kind of options allow you to take an awful lot of stuff. Um, so, one model can take a hand flamer, inferno pistol or plasma pistol. One in five can take an eviscerator and one can change their chainsaw to a power fist, power weapon or thunder hammer. So, little five man squads with a thunder hammer and an eviscerator seem pretty good and um, you know these guys do pack a bit of a punch you take that up to the next level though however with the death company marines with jump packs they lose the access to the thunder hammers but can t especially if taking in small units can take a lot more weapons so one in five can take a plasma pistol uh, one in five can take an eviscerator one in five can take a power fist or a power weapon and then for every one in five, you can take another special weapon and another pistol, so an infernal pistol or a plasma pistol. And again, another power fist if you want. So again, little little five-man squads could have, I don't know, a plasma pistol, an incinerator, two power fists and an eviscerator, which seems really, really good. Um, that's probably what I'd go for, keep the squads little. Initially, when I was building the models, I was thinking, oh, I'll do them as nice kind of big... 10 man squads but keep them in fives gives you that additional kind of power fist and i think that's going to be you know make these really hard hitting when they kind of crash into things so yeah i think they're going to be the units of the uh, the book to be honest 
We also get the new Death Company Dreadnought. It's a Brutalis Dreadnought um, with all the kind of Death Company rules on it. So it's got the Black Rage, it's got Driven by Fury. So yeah, allowing him to kind of creep up towards enemy units. Um, and again, you've got your Blood Fists or your Blood Talons. You get the kind of sweep attack with the Blood Talons and you lose the Bolters. But if you factor in again that detachment where you're getting extra strength and extra attacks, I think that makes the Blood Talons really, really strong because then you've got like 11 attacks in strength 9 on the strike, which is crazy, or 7 attacks hitting a strength uh, 14 on the on the standard strike. So yeah, I think they're going to be pretty effective. The Bolt Predator is still in the book, so that hasn't been lost. That is still here. However, all the other old units are gone. So the Librarian Dreadnoughts, um, any other named character that we haven't covered is removed from the book. And I know a lot of people with some older models were a little bit disappointed that some of that older stuff has been removed. I mean, I think, unfortunately, that's something that we're probably going to see a little bit going forward where Games Workshop are putting out a lot of new plastic kits and I think they're going to start consolidating some older ones and consign them to Legends. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing and I think a lot of this stuff might get revisited in the future but I do get if you're you know a tournament player and you like using those units you have lost access to them for your kind of match by games. Uh, personally I'm all up for, for Legends and, and using what looks cool but um, yeah if you are kind of from a tournament minded kind of place you may need to kind of update some things in your list to make it legal. We do get full Crusade rules in here too. So this is pretty cool. You've got um, basically different flows that allow your characters to be promoted into Sanguinary Guard. Uh, you can have your characters fall to the Black Rage as well. And essentially they kind of, they, they, they gain kind of like battle scars and stuff that also have a kind of a positive part to them as well. As they slowly kind of give into this madness, they will get a bit more erratic, but a lot stronger, which is a really nice mechanic for the army. I think it really works for them. Um, here we go, yeah, the floor. Uh, and again, being able to kind of like promote up your characters and give them different roles. All this fun stuff is always really good in um, in Crusade. And I think that's one of the things that's really strong in in narrative play at the minute, being able to kind of like lean your army into your own narrative and tell your own stories. Crusade's always really, really fun for that. So yeah, and then as ever we get some Crusade badges, which are essentially little achievements that you can try and kind of earn over the course of a campaign, and a Blood Angels name generator. Now there are points in the back of the book, now obviously I suspect that these will probably get updated um, you know, soon after the book comes out, we've seen that for the last few books. Um, the um, Sanguinary Guard, see a tad expensive for 150 for three. Um, we'll see if that switches out. And again, I would take these with a pinch of salt because they're probably going to get updated on Warhammer Community anyway. And uh, that seems to be the way they're going for uh, books at the moment. And in Age of Sigma, they don't even include the points page because. By the time the book's published, it's kind of out of date. But yeah, really, really nice codex. I do get it if you are a Blood Angel player and you've lost access to some units that you do like. Personally, with the, this box, I'm going to be putting together a Death Company force and excited to kind of check that out. So yeah, before we go though, we'll have a look at the assemble miniatures in the box and check out the ones that I managed to get painted up. So you do get an awful lot of stuff in this box. Now, obviously with this arriving quite close to the deadline, I have not had a chance to paint up everything. I have built everything though, and I've painted up the two characters. The um, infantry squads, the upgrade kit has got loads of parts. So I've still got loads left, and with them, I've been able to kind of kit these out with pretty much every option that I wanted. So I've got two power fists on the, the squads with an eviscerator, with a plasma, and uh, inferno pistol in each of them on the uh, foot troops as well. I've given them uh, thunder hammers on the commanders. And again, there's lots and lots of different heads and icons and doodads to stick on them. The Brutalis Dreadnought is pretty much just a stock Brutalis Dreadnought with a Death Company symbol on it. 
so you get lots of spare parts there so if you do want to have multiples of them you are going to have enough parts to do that too but the real winners here are the the two new characters in the box and they are absolutely gorgeous so Astaroth here was really really fun to paint up I wanted to go for quite a vibrant red on them while still having the wings quite dark and shadowy and then kind of like the lightning kind of going around his thunder axe yeah really really nice model I um, I do think this is going to be a popular one for painting tournaments and the like because uh, yeah it's a really really nice model now obviously there's stuff I could go back on here and kind of finesse up a bit but yeah really happy with how he you know for a day's work knocking him together really happy how he turned out and I'm looking forward to painting some more kind of blood angels to go up alongside him um, my favourite character out of the box though is Lamartes he's a bit more understated than Astaroth but it is a really really nice model so um, I've done the black with, with greys, I know some people use blues or greens to do that but I thought greys worked quite well with him being quite a sinister looking character. I'm going to try and replicate this onto the, the Death Company themselves and obviously you've got a lot of skull iconography with him being a chaplain but yeah really really happy with how he turned out. So yeah I think again he's going to be a fun one for people to paint up. Now hopefully um, over the next few weeks seeing what free time I've got between review stuff I'd really like to get the rest of this force painted up I've got a load of uh, Blood Angels Terminators and stuff already so being able to build up a nice little kind of Blood Angels force would be really fun we plan on doing some battle reports with these as well once they're painted up they're going to be facing off against Dave's Orcs for a nice um, kind of Orc versus Blood Angel battle report which should be fun so keep an eye on the website for that um, and yeah, if you have enjoyed this video, we do have a full in-depth write-up of the new Blood Angels Codex over on spruceandbrews.com as well. So if you head over there, you can see kind of what all the units do, what all the detachments are, and yeah, what cool stuff is in the book. I've got some pictures of these models on there too, if you want to have a better look of what they look like in the flesh. So if you have liked this, give us a like, give us a follow. Comment below what your favourite model is from the box. All that stuff really helps drive the engagement and push people towards this video and you know really really helps for us. If you would like to support the site as well we do have an affiliate link to Element Games in the description. If you use that to buy any of your goodies we get a bit of a kickback which helps towards running the site and paying for the costs and all that kind of fun stuff. So yeah let us know if you're going to be picking up this Blood Angels box. What are your thoughts on the removal of some units from the book? And yeah, are you going to be uh, painting up some models? But until next time, have a great weekend and we'll see you soon.